Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is David, this is David K Reacts, and here on this channel I ramble with articulation, I hope, about a variety of visual, audio, and musical elements of videos that I watch. Today is video part of video game month, and you are supposed to be getting a reaction analysis to voice plays The Dragonborn Comes. And in case the change of shirt hadn't given it away from what's in the thumbnail, this is actually future David speaking. The reason I am here is that for some reason I lost the audio of everything that I personally said during the reaction portion, including my introduction, which is why I'm re-recording everything here. There is still going to be a reaction analysis, just the reaction's a little wonky. <laughs> For that end, I or to that end, I have put it at the very end of the video so that those who are more interested in the discussion can still hear it. The reaction at the end will be silent from me. You will see everything that I am uh, sort of experiencing, so if you would like to watch that reaction, and I mean genuinely just watch it, please head to the end of the video and you can watch it there. Um, it's just, it, it, the audio is all gone. I don't think it's too much of a problem because I am going to gush about everything that I found amazing during the analysis part anyway, but I did just want to let everybody know. Um, Additionally, we have a special guest with us today, who is going to join for the analysis part somewhat sooner in this video edit than I had expected, and that is Angie Woolard of Confessions of a Chord Junkie. I will put a link to her website up here with a card. Uh, and she writes amazing blog entries about pieces of music and digs really deep into chordal structure, harmony, things like that. And I do heartily recommend that you check her blog out. And she will be joining me for the analysis to discuss this video. Uh, I will, I, I don't think there's anything I covered in, because of course I can't, I don't lip read very well, so I can't even figure out what I said. I don't think I said anything about her that won't be covered in the introduction when she comes onto the channel. But I did, of course, lose all of me talking about the context of the song, so I'm going to do that quickly now. Um, I, now, first things first, and maybe I need to hand in my gamer card, um, I have not played Skyrim. Uh, or rather, I have. I played about 25 minutes of it. I bought a copy on the Xbox 360 right fairly soon after it first came out, and I think I got a dodgy disc. I did buy it secondhand, so that's on me. I used to buy a lot of secondhand games back in the day, and every time I opened a door, the game crashed. And so I never really got to play it, and it was just one of those things, I never got round to doing anything about it, so I never played the game. Um, Skyrim is the fifth game in the Elder Scrolls series, which is extremely popular, and I did play the Elder Scrolls 3, Morrowind, and much even more so, uh, the Elder Scrolls 4, Oblivion which I absolutely loved. These are serious games, like they have amazing uh, people involved in these, uh, even down to the voice acting. Uh, one of the key characters in Oblivion is voiced by Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, he, you basically start the game in jail with the king, who is Patrick Stewart. And it's just remarkable that I'm sure there's other people I should know off the top of my head, but uh, even though I said exactly the same thing when I recorded the original intro here, it's, it's fidelity for you. Um, I didn't think to check between then and now. Um, so I don't have a lot to say about the uh, the sort of plot of Skyrim, other than I believe it is set more in the Nord kingdoms. The Nords are kind of sort of Viking type warriors, lots of furs, uh, you know, blue war paint, axes, swords, kind of berserker type characters, uh, and I, they live in colder areas. And I believe that is a lot of where Skyrim is based. Um, I do actually say this in the middle of the analysis, but I'll say it now because I forgot to originally. The Dragonborn in the title, The Dragonborn Comes, is you. You are the Dragonborn. You are not, uh, it's, it's just the name that is given to your character. I, I'm sure there is lore behind it, but I don't know it. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail about that. If somebody wants to leave a note in the comments, then please do so. Hello. We have a guest, just as we did in the original. Do you want to dragon roar to your friends? Translates as Fus Roda. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm in a silly mood tonight. Uh, anyway, so I don't have a lot to say about the plot of the game. What I can comment on is the Elder Scrolls um, in general. The game series has been around a long time. I can't, I don't actually remember when the first one came out, but it, it was a long time ago and they, they, you know, we're on the fifth one now. They're probably developing a sixth. There's also an online game, uh, which I haven't really played. I don't play a lot of online games as those who saw my video on We All Live Together will know. Um, and uh, they're just phenomenal. Uh, they have some bugs and jank uh, because they're made by Bethesda. 
Uh, <laughs> and that implies a degree of jank in their engines. But they are fantastic. I will I will actually bring that up later in the analysis, I just remembered. So, um, But uh, this piece of music that we're coming to, The Dragonborn Comes, is from Skyrim. And it is uh, something that is... I. And what I said before, and I'm going to give you more or less the same introduction, even though I have a little more information now, because I want to give the same information that I had. Um, my understanding of the Dragonborn comes is that it's a combination of two pieces of music. Dragonborn, which is the main theme of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, um, and The Dragonborn Comes, which is a set of lyrics that are sung by different bards around the different taverns in Skyrim. As you walk around the game, you can pay a bard to sing a song, and this is one of the songs that you can request. And some time ago, I think close on, a, I'm not even sure, I've, I saw a video pop up on YouTube, YouTube, excuse me, that was a remastered audio eight years later, so eight years or more ago. Maluka, who I actually just covered last week in my um, reaction analysis to Peter Hollins and Maluka's take on Good Riddance from Hades, she did a version of a song where she combined Dragonborn and The Dragonborn Comes, the music with the lyrics. And that is what The Dragonborn Comes is. To the best of my knowledge, a lot of this information garnered from Wikipedia. Or uh, rather from the uh, Skyrim um, fanpedia page. I can't think what it is right now. Um, so that's my understanding of the song. The song was written by Jeremy Sewell. Jeremy has written a lot of fantastic music. For a start, he started writing for The Elder Scrolls with The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, and has written, uh, I think, all the scores since then. I don't know about the online one, but certainly 3, 4, and 5. Um, he's also written for the Guild Wars series, the Metal Gear Solid series, uh, the Harry Potter games, um, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, which was hugely successful, fantastic game, and actually a game I played that's, I think, lesser known, and I had a really good time with, a little unusual, called Consortium. Um, the sequel's out, apparently not quite as good, I haven't played it yet, so I don't know if he wrote the music for that too, but, you know, this is just a sampling of his work, and it's all brilliant, and so... As I said in my previous introduction, I was very excited to see what voice play would do with it, and I wasn't wrong to be. Um, so, yes, there's that to go with. The other thing that's worth noting is that this, the um, uh, the song contains lyrics in Dragon Tongue, which is a fictional language that I'm now not sure who invented it. I, I said in my original introduction that it was created by Emile uh, Pagliarulo, but I was reading something while I was analysing with... Um, Angie, that led me to believe it could have been invented by Jeremy Sewell himself. Question mark on that. If somebody could clarify that for me, I'd be grateful. Um, it did seem in my research that it was Emil, but this one article I pulled up said Jeremy did it. So, mm, question mark. Um, but what's really cool about it is that the lyrics were written to rhyme in Dragon Tongue and in English, which I just love playing. Playing with languages is awesome. Uh, language is an extraordinary thing, and I love that he did that. Um... I think that's everything that I had to say, so I will simply say welcome back to my channel, welcome if this is your first time here. If it is, you're getting a slightly janky video, which is actually really appropriate for this series. <laughs> um, what normally happens is I watch the video through from beginning to end and comment and emote over the top of it, but then I go back and watch it a second time and I pause, I interrupt, I offer what analysis and commentary I feel I can based on what I've seen and heard and the foreknowledge of having seen it once before. Obviously, both of those are going to differ in this video because you're getting the analysis first with Angie. So there'll be a bit more interplay there. And then you'll get the reaction afterwards, sans audio. That is purely there for you to enjoy my visual reaction if that's something you would like to do. Um, please do like the video if you enjoy. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you would care to donate to support the channel, you can do so by heading to buymeacoffee.com forward slash David K Reacts, where you can donate a one off donation of your choice. You can go to uh, patreon.com forward slash David K Reacts, where there is a single tier of two Canadian dollars at this point in time. And that uh, is a, long, a means of long term supporting the channel if you'd like to, and also gains you access to my discord or you could leave a super thanks right here on youtube none of them necessary but very gratefully received if you would care to do so and i think that's everything i had to say i hope it is so without any further delay i am going to throw the video back to david and angie to look at the analysis of voice plays cover of the dragonborn comes from the elder scrolls 5 skyrim and after that will be a silent reaction from me 
um, so that you could enjoy the silly faces I made while I watched it for the very first time. I didn't want to re-record a reaction because that's not genuine. All of my reactions are first time reactions and if they're not, I state in the video, this is analysis only. I thought the reaction was kind of fun, which is why I'm sticking it at the end, but... Anyway, I hope that you enjoy the video anyway. My apologies for the tech glitches. I'll ensure that... that uh, I'm not even 100% sure exactly what happened, but I'll try and make sure it doesn't happen again. And here is the video for your enjoyment. Thank you. So, through the magic of editing, please welcome to the channel, Angie Willard! Hello! Hello! How are you doing? I'm great, how are you? Excellent. I am very well indeed. So just to refresh the memories of those who saw the last video or to inform people who didn't, um, you are the blogger of Confessions of a Core Junkie, yes. which is a analysis. You, you kind of do what I do with video. You just do it in text, but yes. very deep dive into the music, right? Chords are my jam. Yep. <laughs> It's kind of given away in the title. Um, <laughs> love it. Uh, but yeah, Angie's super, super good at breaking down chords and things like that. And unlike myself, where I have seen this literally just for the first time, you have analyzed this. You haven't, you haven't got a blog on this one yet, right? But you have analyzed it previously uh, yes. leading up to us doing this together. Right. Yeah. Where, whereas you like to do your uh, analyses sort of off the cuff, I like to sort of sit and play on my uh, keyboard and just really figure stuff out that's what gives me the most pleasure so i've uh, i've done a, a deep dive into this song the, you know to the best of my knowledge and and uh, that's where i For am sure. right now awesome uh and it's nice because it means we get two very different takes on this i might just think that the chord is amazing and you can probably tell me why uh in a way <laughs> that i can't because for those who don't know i do this in my basement and i don't have room for a piano if you happened to see my sonic the hedgehog april fools video you'll see why because the only way i can fit a piano in here is to play it facing away from you and that does not make me a particularly <laughs> engaging individual <laughs> but we don't need to worry about that right now because we are looking at this amazing video that we have now both seen um mm -hmm. You heard my reaction to that, so you know exactly I what I thought of half of it. It was very good. Yeah, um, and you re you reacted to the things that I thought you'd react, and even though I couldn't hear the video, I'm like, oh yeah, he's probably at this part. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's what he's talking about there. And, yeah. And this, for any who didn't see the previous video too, is exactly why the two of us decided to do this too. Because what was it you watched of mine? Was it Man of Constant Sorrow? You uh, watched of mine? Yes. And yes. you were you were you, you realized that. Um, you picked up we on noticed all the, the same, same things. things that, yeah, and so we yeah. just thought this would be a fun thing to do. Anyway, that's right. where all this came from. Um, but let's start on this awesome thing. And we both said, now I have a penchant, as my viewers will know, for stopping within less than two seconds of the video starting to talk about something. Um, well, I wasn't happens, even going to no... let you start. <laughs> well, there's no black screen on this one anyway, so we start here. Uh, you had something to say, as do I, so why don't you go first? What, what's well, your... I'm... Thing. I have a feeling it's going to be roughly the same thing. So as you saw, um, I, and I knew exactly what you're talking about when I heard, oh, Jeff, or whatever, whatever <laughs> you said there. That, like, what a grand opening to a song. And I'll, I should preface this by saying, I know that there exists a game called Skyrim. And right. that is the extent of my knowledge. So I don't, I don't even know what these characters are, what they're trying to portray. I can only... Um, kind of analyze it from what I'm gleaning from the song, which actually gives me kind of a unique um, perspective. I think I'm not, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not coming into the song with a bunch of foreknowledge whatsoever. So right. whatever they're presenting in the video is what I think the story is that they're telling me. Yeah. So, so Jeff coming in with the, those two magnificent notes, just right off the bat. Um, first of all, when we, when we hit play again, um, the first note that he hits is a um, G sharp one mm -hmm. and then going down to a C sharp one. Oh. And what I find, <laughs> what I find um, it's the attention to detail. Jeff can easily hit that G sharp one oh, in yeah, his chest totally. voice, but he chose to hit that in subharmonics to mm -hmm. marry it with the note that he knew was coming. So it just uh, makes it a little bit more cohesive. Yeah. And also, um, Starting those notes, he starts with a closed mm, and then he opens up and it's, I don't know if he's supposed to be a dragon. I mean, it's right there in the title, but mm -hmm. it really gave me sort of dragon roaring kind of um, vibes, just starting with a closed sure. and, it, mwah, and he just sustains that for so long. So I just oh, found so that, true. yeah, it's such an interesting and evocative way of opening the song. Again, to me, because I don't have any knowledge of the song, that's what it reminded me of is, uh, 
a dragon coming around the corner and then just like summoning his his troops <laughs> absolutely he's not actually meant to be a dragon there are dragons in this game the dragon i realized i should have mentioned this before the dragon born is the player character um they're kind of like a legendary uh legendary individual kind of i don't know if it's prophesied or if there are dragonborn who are around and you happen to be one of them again haven't actually played the game i know a decent amount about the lore of the elder scrolls but i don't know specifically skyrim but i know you are the dragonborn i am 99.9 percent .9 certain of that and you are whatever race you choose to be um you are not a dragon you cannot be a dragon in this but you can be a variety of different races which are represented in this video uh jeff I'm guessing, based on the color of the armor and the face paint, I feel like he's probably meant to be a red guard, who are kind of pretty, you know, they're, they're your standard human. They have a particular political affiliation and all that kind of stuff. Whereas uh, Lane, I think, is probably a Nord, um, who are kind of more Viking-based. Um, and I think they're quite plentiful in Skyrim, because it's kind of all wintry and up north. Um, Caesar, I assume, is some form of elf. Uh, I'm not sure what kind. Uh, Ellie, I'm staring at, assuming he's a member of the Mages Guild, but I don't yeah. exactly know what race he's supposed to be. Um, and Caesar, I cannot remember the name of the faction, but there's Omar. a faction. Uh, excuse me, Omar, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, no, um, sorry, Omar is an elf. I apologize. Oh, okay. I, I, I just switched people in my head. Caesar, I feel like, is supposed to be. There's a faction of kind of like armored dudes who <laughs> are all throughout Oblivion. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what their faction name is. Again, we'll just call them Armored Dudes. Yeah, Armored Dudes. If I happen to think about it, I'll put a note right here. Um, I don't know where here actually is, because we're going to be small circles in the corner of the screen. So I could be pointing in totally the wrong direction. <laughs> you guys will figure it out. Um, but yes, anyway, the point being, you can be any of these people that you want. You can also be a, a lizard man. Um, again, I forget the names of these all the races. A um, couple of other things. Can you be... Anyway, I could go on forever about games. Uh, I won't. What I was going to jump into and say right at the beginning here is just the quality of this set. Um, I, there's nothing unexpected at this point about voice play being in really cool sort of scenarios and situations recording their videos. But this, I'm curious if actually some of this has been recycled from the villain's lair. Uh, if anybody happens to know, let me know. Um, well, or do you know? I, it, uh, yeah, it is the villain's lair. Um set up like the wall and stuff yeah i couldn't yeah, remember and if the table, a fireplace or not i think the table is like a, a number of the, the smaller sets yeah 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 yeah. that makes sense uh i had a feeling it might be i love how easy it is for them to repurpose stuff and make it look completely different we know it's the villain's lair because we're voice play nerds um or patty cake nerds i guess yeah. um but it, you could easily just look at this and not see it at all but it's just it's so beautifully realized they've left their space clear in front of them so they've got plenty of space to move into as they perform the song which is great but the just like the candles scattered around the different light sources we've got such a fascinating use of light here um because there's all this warm light and it's only in tiny little spots the screen itself is very cold and i think that blend is really nice and you have in that background as well you have all these little yellowy lights with the candles and things like that but that orange glow coming from the fire doesn't that just kind of give you that vibe of i want to go and cuddle up next to that kind of thing like it's just that exactly. warmth in the it's so small it's the tiny part of the screen but just the small details they throw into this it's just really really impressive and this was I would have probably had a, oh, wow, that's ridiculously cool about the set at the beginning of my video, but then Jeff Jeffed. And... <laughs> I've never You're heard not... a more accurate description than that. <laughs> you kind of can't get away from that. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I was going to say as well, you know, You've made the point, but he's, he starts out in what's such a comfort range for him. And yes, you're right. Starts in subharmonics rather than chest. He could perfectly easily do that in chest. Yeah. So, so easy for him to sing those notes and yet make them sound way more impressive than they are for Jeff. Right. P put that caveat on hard because that's impressive for most people. Just for Jeff, we know full well he's capable of more. And then boom. I think I was in the middle of commenting how cool the start was when he went down. And <laughs> I just kind of lost all train of thought anyway let's jump in and, and see a moment of what we're talking about here um and i'm sure we'll probably stop it in 10 seconds or so <laughs> uh incidentally we both have control for anyone who hasn't seen our previous video so either of us can stop it at any point and probably will do liberally um yeah here we go i 
Actually, I am going to stop it right there. I love the vocal contrast between this whoa, that's going on down there and just these gentle dum 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 dum. It's such a different sound, and I think and yet that they go it, together so well. They do, and I think this is one thing that voice play does particularly well: is they always have a way of making the person who you should be focusing on stand out. Mm -hmm. And right now, it seems to me it's that Jeff has this really wide sound that he's you know he's producing it deep and dark. But he's got a lot of resonance for it. Whereas the others are mostly, mm, there's a bit of d a little open mouth, but it's mostly very, very closed mouth, small amount of resonator being used. And it just gives Jeff so much. He doesn't need space because he's so far down, but they give it to him anyway. And I really, really like that because it just, it, it lets that harmony exist perfectly functionally, but it is still supporting, even though it's arguably in the range that we would expect to hear music more often. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful stuff. But it's just, yeah, it's, it's a great harmonic entrance, just having this kind of, not quite bell chord, but this broken pattern of, of sort of broken arpeggios. Our hero, our hero who claims a war. Again, more vocal production things, but the ooh, while they're, well, he's actually singing that. Again, a change of tone while we get those lyrics, but then right back to the dum, 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 as yeah, soon it, as he hits that final <clears throat> note. Yeah, it really brings you, like it advances the, the interest, the excitement, even though we're still in, you know, the first 24 seconds of the song, just mm -hmm. if, if it was kept to doom the whole way, it would be very uh, static and stagnant. Whereas yeah. even, even starting now with opening it up, you know that something even bigger is going to come. Yeah, I mean, people who watch my channel are probably sick of me hearing the word, saying the words layered and evolution. Uh, <laughs> but they're two things voice play does particularly well. And this is a case in point. You don't have mm -hmm. to wait long in a song to start evolving it, as long as you don't evolve it from... Too fast. You know, a ukulele to a metal band. Like you, ha <laughs> you, have to have, you have to have the scale in between. Yeah. And they can increment that scale so small. Yeah, uh, as long as... That's a, that's a... You just have to leave yourself uh, somewhere to go. So you can't, yeah. like, like you said, you can't get too big too fast. And clearly they haven't done that yet. But they, uh, uh, with Jeff's arrangements, um, he, he knows how to build it, pull back, you know, kind of two steps forward, one step back uh, to yeah. get you to the pinnacle part of the song. Yeah, he really, really does. Yeah. Okay, just try to drop it back a few seconds so we can roll forward. Warriors hard. I tell you, I tell you. I'm going to pause it right there in anticipation mm -hmm. of what's coming up. Uh, <laughs> like, like uh, because I know the song so well. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I've got my timestamps already. Um, oh, go for it. It's all good. This coming up at 30, 34 ish seconds when Caesar comes and does his line is mm. my favorite part of the entire song. His okay. vocal quality is just sublime. It's, uh, he got he's got a, a fifth jump he's um from his first note to his second note and he just hits it perfectly now i know that there might be some studio melodining in there but you have to be pretty close to 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 make that work not only that but um caesar has so many different textures in his voice that he can draw upon mm. depending on what's needed where and this texture we don't hear from him very often he's much lower in his range he goes down to a That's B uh, two, and it's um, really okay. It's such a, it's a warm, clear. Um, often Caesar sings with uh, sort of a breathy quality, which I really enjoy, and that's always very mm -hmm. appropriate to wherever it's put in the song. But this one, he's just got a couple of notes, and it's just it's just bang on perfect. Perhaps coming from Jeff's kind of warm, resonant um, right. solo line that he just did. Again, knowing how, how to, to step up, uh, do the stepping yeah. stones uh, into the song. So pay attention to Caesar's amazing um, timbre, his amazing mm. fifth jump, 
um, in his in his little solo line here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will do. Um, one thing I was going to just going back a few seconds, the interesting focus here. So when you're singing, for the most part, emotion comes from the vowels, meaning comes from the consonants. It's something you often hear. And it's interesting here that Jeff has this really long note at the, and that we just finished at, and he doesn't sing comes. With a singable consonants. Yes. And he That's... just sits there on that M. Yeah. And you'll notice throughout the song, uh, as we go along, Omer's got a couple of spots where they really do embrace the single consonants in this, which mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, you, you do uh, normally sing sort of vowel to vowel. The consonants are in there to make your words discernible, but there's so much missed opportunity sometimes when you do that. And you can't do it all the time. Otherwise it sounds kind of ridiculous, but to hold sure. an M or an N, um, just for the right amount of time. So that's one of the things that they're, they're also really good at. Yeah, agreed. I mean, Jeff does it a lot in his own music, which we've mm -hmm. talked about previously, but it's, it's this is so nice because I think, again, it's another vocal texture. He's now the one who's singing the hum that the group was singing beforehand, but it just it it's kind of closing something out for him. So it kind of plays a little bit differently to the way that we heard it previously. And I just, I, it always interests me seeing how he plays with his own sort of vowel to consonant ratio as well because mm -hmm. um, I feel like he's somebody who is not unwilling to experiment with that and Absolutely. it usually pays off alrighty yeah. let's run into this uh, this gorgeous Caesar entry That's so fascinating to me. Yes, you're absolutely right about that line, by the way. I love the clarity in that because he does. You're right. He's got a very breathy quality that he usually uses to great effect. But the choice not to use it here is so good. Mm -hmm. And I think Caesar's versatility <clears throat> is sometimes, I don't want to say underrated. I, don't, I think people know he's good, but he doesn't always, it's, it's maybe a little underutilized by voice play on occasion. Or um, they, they use it where needed and don't uh, highlight it where somebody else is meant to shine. That's fair. That's fair. But I'm trying to think of the last time I heard him sing with this much clarity, and I'm not sure off the top well, of my head. It, I've got it in my mind. I, that's that's what made it stand out to me. Is is mm -hmm. um, when when he's got a solo line, it's usually sort of like a, a solo singer kind of feel yeah, to it. Yeah. Whereas this is a solo line within an ensemble, and he's had to match the the um, the resonance and timbre that's that's just been passed off to him. So yes. Uh, maybe it's a little bit different. Often when we hear Caesar on his own, it's very much um, uh, like a solo singer with some backup singers, whereas this is a little yes. bit different. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting, actually, hilariously, given video game music is often not this, I realized I've had quite a lot of kind of dirgy type songs uh, this month with Skull and Bones. Uh, we all live together. It's a little bit more vibrant, but not a lot something that hasn't come out yet but still has that kind of dirge like quality it's weird how much there's some there's some really really good quality slow deep uh melodious but very dark music in games and i, I th this was unplanned i'm actually mildly surprised looking at it right now and going wow that's actually this is this is <laughs> a sequence that seems to be going on right now um what I love, though, and it, you saying he's gone down to a B2 compared to the G sharp <laughs> 1 makes 100% sense in my mind. I'm not saying, incidentally, those two notes are what are being sung right now, but just in terms of depth. Because of all the people I would have expected to have this specific harmonic sound, Jeff and Caesar would not be the two I would have chosen. Jeff and Ellie, sure, we've heard Ellie cover bass. That's another thing that's awesome when it comes up. Same with Lane. Um, you know, that sort of thing doesn't surprise me. But to hear Caesar so low mm -hmm. doing this kind of open tenth harmony thing that's going on here, I think that's what we're listening to. Um, for those who aren't so musically inclined, we have our one to eight being the octave. So once you go up above that, you can start counting higher, nine and ten. So what you're essentially talking about is the a third. major third, right. the two notes, but you just put the third up an octave. An octave. <laughs> it's a stunning combination. You stick a fifth in the middle of that, it's even better. But that combination is really, really gorgeous. It is not something... Jeff, at the top of his range, I could see doing that with Caesar. 
Jeff doing it at the bottom of his range with Caesar really mm-hmm. caught me by surprise. Mm-hmm. And they just sound so good together, the two voices. They, do. they really and do. You'll notice that even um, the, the difference in timbre that Caesar's had to do now to sing at the same time as Jeff is a little bit different right. than that solo line that he just came off of where he's very um, smooth, less breathy. Now yeah. he's kind of uh, added a little bit more texture, a little bit more cello-like quality to his voice to kind of match the timbre That's a of, good description. Um, of Jeff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's just jump. I'm going to jump back just to the end of him singing and we'll run on. But just so that uh, with that thought in mind, we can listen to that once more. stop there i was just about um, to do that <laughs> i thought you might be yeah that whoa whoa harmony section again talk about evolution not only do we have a different sound we haven't had before in in the or oh, being a more a open consonant. sound than the ooze we've had we've added a consonant and we've added motion previously it was like okay that line's done let's change to whatever else or jeff's line's finished let's go back to tum again this is active motion within it and again this is all perfectly natural building they're just doing it's this is such a great example of it because it is so staggered and what i was saying earlier they increment it so minutely and that this is just showing that off really really well um and then omar comes in and you just melt all over again because that's amazing and it's interesting that omar has come in with a, a melody line that's a full octave above everybody else First, mm-hmm. you've got Jeff, and then you've got Caesar in his low range. Then you've got Omar quite high, and it's not jarring at all. And again, no. I think it's to do with he's high, but he's he's not in um, like in a falsetto range or or, or voice. But right. he's he's just kept it so it's smooth. It's it's not got that sort of sharp shrillness that you sometimes get with a high range. And I think that just Absolutely. kind of it it uh, went perfectly. Uh, Another reason I was going to stop it here is um, Omar's got a really lovely uh, turn of, uh, it's not really a diphthong turn, but more of a a singable consonant when he says Skyrim's Mm. foes. That's just, it's perfectly executed. I didn't pick up on that. Yes. It's just perfection. What you were saying beforehand, timing those things is so, so critical. You don't want anything to be too long. But also, if you're going to do that, you need to make it long enough that you can actually make it a viable think, thing rather yeah. than just a, a passing consonant on the way yeah. to the the the, the, the uh, pluralization or whatever it happens to be you're leading into. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm going to jump back and, and pass through that because I didn't pick up on that. Oh, yeah. Beware, beware the dragonborn comes So I don't know if, if did you hear that little sound effect in the background? I did. A little. That's one of the things. I, yeah, I thought that is that not Lane? That's I'm assuming that's Lane just doing a bass uh, drum and then reverberating it. I have a feeling it might actually be a plug-in of some sort. Okay, because that was what I was that's... saying earlier when I was saying we hadn't heard much from Lane except for that. That was the sound I was talking about. Oh, I assumed it was yeah. him, but you might be right. No, because Lane is singing right now singing yeah okay i didn't know if they double track him maybe but um but uh, that's so it is so cool using these um you probably i think you did notice because i was listening to you uh watch it the first time is we don't actually get percussion in the song until approximately i think it's 201 or so yeah that's when lane starts his his actual over halfway through for sure so uh, they've introduced a couple of little elements to kind of I, I wonder if it's like getting you prepared for the percussion. And this mm. is one of them, this little bo, 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 bo. And we hear right. it a couple of times throughout the song. I just thought it was, again, building the interest as you go, um, not too Definitely. fast, but but you can't just all of a sudden spring something on, on the audience, I think. No, agreed. Um, I also love what they've done here. You can maybe speak to this slightly better than me. Is it three or four part harmony that they come in there? Um, I wasn't listening. 
Okay. Um, they, they they just bring in this really harmonically rich thing at the beginning of this on um, Caesar's first line here. But then by the time he gets to the end of phrase one and starts phrase two, he starts it solo. And then all of a sudden they all come in in unison. And so we have this harmonic, like rich opening that immediately closes right back off again. And I just, I think it's it's fascinating to me how much they're playing with the breadth of this. Because you've gone from C sharp one Jeff to whatever the hell Omar's singing up the top there. And then you have a moment here where you have four people singing exactly the same note. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe there's an octave in it. It might be octave unison. It might be true unison. I'm not 100% certain. But it's just it, th that the way that they're switching and playing this, th this, this, I am going to bring the word evolution back a lot in this one because this is such a prime example of how well they do it um, yeah. in so many different, and you, catching the the sound effect there the harmonic diff there's so many ways that they're gradually just leading us to that point where they're in you know full tilt right yeah uh, i'm just going to jump back to just hear that little harmonic thing one more time beware beware the dragon born come the dragon comes for the darkness has passed and the legend Here's that sound again. Yeah. And that time on a full break too, which right. is so effective. Uh, that... I actually didn't pick up on it the first... The, the, this time when you mentioned it, I was like, oh yeah, we did just have that, and my brain had clocked it. But right. the first time watching it through, this was the first time I picked up on it. Yeah. And I also wonder, again, playing with the different sound effects, is that breath coming in, I, I wonder, is that... Um, kind of foreshadowing that uh, that frost breath that's coming near the near the end of the song the fusro right. so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe i'm just reading into it what i choose to read into it but uh, <laughs> i'm going to call it foreshadowing for sure well no i think there is something because something is at the very least coming out of lane's mouth um this this actually also reinforces my belief that he's a nord uh quite besides the vi the kind of viking get up but they live in a colder region so it kind of it kind of works with it slightly right um but yeah it's uh I, the the fusradar is something very slightly different but i think while it may not be frost in that case they have still kind of given this idea of projection from the mouth of something that is visual um and it's great doing that and i think that foreshadowing is a good word to use also for this drum thing not just because of the uh the way we're talking about it but you were saying it's good not to throw things at the audience too quickly mm -hmm. i think the fact that i just said what i just said before that which was i didn't hear the first one but I wasn't surprised by this one. Right. And it's so, probably because it was there. Yeah. Subconsciously, it probably seeped in, but you, you, you didn't really go, oh, what was that? It's just like yeah. added to the whole thing. And one of my favorite comments I get on this channel, I'm grateful to say a lot, thank you all who say this to me, is people who say, you've made me realize why I liked this thing. And I think what's so interesting about that comment is there is no indication there, and I don't think this would be the case either, I haven't made you hear something you didn't hear already. I just pointed it out so now you know it's there, just like yeah. Angie just did with me. Pointed out that first drum hit I hadn't really even clocked, but I knew it was there. As soon as she said it, boom, oh yeah, obviously. But you don't, and you might not have the either the understanding of the vocabulary to be able to pick that stuff out, and that's why voice plays music is so fascinating, because they layer it so neatly with all these little things that go somewhere um yeah awesome there was one more thing i wanted to comment on i can't remember what it was i'm just gonna jump back 10 seconds oh that was it no not that here we go for the darkness has passed and the legend yet grows that line really interested me. The darkness has passed in probably the lightest voice we've heard so far. That's I, true. I would argue that Omar probably sits on a same level, but mm -hmm. Ellie's pushing a little more here and that it's coming through as a bit more of like a sort of clarion voice. And that line gets sung by that voice doesn't seem like a coincidence to me, especially when you then follow that up with... everybody climbing and then suddenly back down in the darkness again 
that does not seem like a coincidence. That's a brilliant observation. I love what they do with this stuff. Oh. <laughs> I know I'm not I'm not commenting very much because I just I just keep getting drawn into it. <laughs> oh, too easy. Too e I have to keep reminding myself I do I'm doing an analysis channel here and stop. <laughs> now, I uh this section of the song um it feels to me again, I don't know what's actually happening with the song in the game or, right. or what, what the game is actually, I don't know what the, um, the plot is of the overall game, but to me, this, this uh, section of it feels like rallying the troops. I don't know, are they going to battle or, or something like that, but I, it seems like, what, I mean, there's a lot of fighting in these games. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like when, when Jeff came in the, in the doorway at the beginning of the song, he's kind of like, Okay, dudes, this is what's going to happen. And he's like telling them mm. what's going to happen. And now everybody's just kind of, they're, they're, I, I called it rallying the troops and they're just kind of coming together, um, oh, good stealing script. themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, as far as I'm aware, like the very, very, very minute amount of plot that I'm aware of is essentially you start the game, uh, you're actually being taken to be hanged and your execution gets interrupted by a dragon coming and burning the town down. And you happen to get away. But I think a lot of the game is about then going out and I think the dragons are kind of going a bit mad or something like that. Uh, or at least one of them is. And a lot of it is about going down and kind of taking care of said dragon, who has an amazing name I can't remember. Um, I'm sure somebody will let you know in the yeah. comments. Or I'll stick it up here or mm -hmm. over here or that way or this. Where, wherever <laughs> it's going to be, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i pretty sure you... you take down at least a few of them. So this could be, all right, we know where he is now, let's go. Uh, so I think that's a very, very viable uh, interpretation there. Especially and even the, if it's not. So the, the, then the music uh, is indicating such, but of course, then they all start to stand up and they're kind of moving yes. toward, uh, you know, their, their formation for the rest of the song, standing in a, a line of five, so. Yeah, and even if it's not that, I think the fact that you as somebody who doesn't know the game at all can still take context and story out of this is a testament to their storytelling in such a small, you know, they don't do a lot in this video mm -hmm. and yet there is still indication that something is happening. Exactly. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right. <laughs> and there already we've got that. <laughs> Going up. And that's about the, what's interesting is that it's become this very strident and actually I, I, feel like at the beginning of the game it probably would be it's kind of become in a lot of orchestrations it's kind of da 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 it's kind of got a pirates the caribbean type thing mm -hmm. going on in terms of pace and orchestration but morrowind the game it was written for this is the first piece of music you hear and it really is that da 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 and they're kind of channeling that a little bit here in the arrangement and i love it I don't know if that's what Dragonborn is like. Maybe it is. Maybe Dragonborn's more the pirates kind of vibe. I don't know. But uh, I just, it's nice hearing it in that kind of slow fashion because it is, that's what it was originally. It just happens to work really well as like this martial strident anthem. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, speaking uh, about the music specifically, mm -hmm. we've got an ascending kind of melody line. Everybody's awing, but there's, there is a, a, a melody in there and it's this ascending, which kind of, makes it even more exciting is like something big is going to happen now uh i'm sure near the end of the song it might be a descending line but yeah. descending is a little bit more exciting yeah definitely all right I'm going to pause it here in anticipation of what's coming Very up. Very fair. Okay. Um, how I, we've talked about the fact that there's no percussion until the middle of the right. song, which we're, we're getting close to uh, where the percussion yes. does start. We did hear that kind of boom, 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 boom sound effect mm -hmm. twice now. But now, um, rather than an ah, uh, Jeff's bass line is now going to be slightly percussive. Again, I think leading us or preparing us for when the actual percussion start is kind of like a, yeah. a nice build up to that. Yeah. Yeah. He's very good at that actually using himself as kind of like a double bass kind of thing. You can, he could add in like a sort of pizzicato almost effect to some of the attack on some of his notes. Um, 
or it's like a low bass drum kind of thing. He's very, very good at being able to be slightly percussive as he sings, mm-hmm. um, which is you can achieve with, you know, even tum 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 kind of thing that they were doing earlier is percussive to a point, but he kind of makes it quite instrumental, which I have a lot of admiration for because it, it can be used in so many ways. Yeah. And before when we had the dumbs, it was um, all the background vocals, whereas now we're going to yeah. have the background vocals uh, and a more sustained um, line, whereas Jeff's going to be dum, 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 dum. So it kind of right. preparing us for what's up, what's about to come. Yeah, totally. I also love that we get just the, the slightest hint of Rock God Ellie coming through there. Yes. Like, not a lot, but he just he's just giving it that little extra oomph right now that previously... I mean, look at his face was... right now. Well, <laughs> I th- but I think he was just as high earlier, but this time he's just giving it a little bit more of that A little bit kind of grit, of... yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. is just, it's, it's cool kind of getting that. Yeah, yeah. Get ready for the bass line. Very bass guitar. Yeah. Just in time for Lane. <laughs> I also love, just before we do get Lane, I love that every time we've had the dum 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 thing in the background, there's been something different happening over the top. The first time I didn't even hear uh, the one that one, uh, it was kind of pretty much the entire chorus over it. The second mm-hmm. time is dead silence. Now mm-hmm. you have Ellie holding on a note. Mm-hmm. Like they, Even though they're doing the same thing again and again, they change it. Exactly. Which so it great. makes might, makes cohesion yet interest. If they did the same thing the same way all the time, it would be boring. Yeah. But if you've got a, a recurring sound effect or whatever uh, happening in slightly different iterations, that's that's cohesive, uh, but also interesting. Yeah, and it's one of those things that can make any song like you know you you talk about if you, people have probably heard talk about song structures or seen it on Instagram or something where you get something like an A A B A. Uh, for example, where you have four lines in a, a song and the first two lines are repeated, the third line is something different, and then the fourth line is the first line again. But you can also have A, A, B, A1, which is A again, but there's something not quite the same about it. Yes. And that immediately makes the song slightly more interesting. A, A, B, A is a very kind of 60s um, way of songwriting, I think. Yeah. Um, you kind of get a little bit later on and suddenly there are changes appearing at certain points and it just elevates how much, especially nowadays uh, where repetition is less common, it draws the ear in a lot more easily. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think they, they do that sort of thing very, very well. Okay, Lane. Now, again, here's me not knowing a single thing about the storyline or what's <laughs> happening. But Which to me, fine. this sounds like um, like they're they're riding over the plains. They have to get to the battle. I'm thinking of Lord yeah. of the Rings. I'm, I'm a big Lord of the Rings uh, nerd. Um, yes. That being said, I can't actually remember the section of the movie that I'm thinking of. But, um, you know, when they're um, they're either walking on foot, running on foot, over the plains, a wide sweeping vista, or on horseback, uh, just a, yeah. that's what this part reminds me of. It's probably to do oh, with there's the- there's that lovely, um, there's the Gimli Legolas Aragorn uh, at the beginning of the second film, where they're trying to chase down and figure out where the hobbits where are. Where the hobbits are, um, yeah. Either I that or the, you... uh, the the riding of the Rohirrim across the, the plains. Rohirrim, yeah. yeah, something like that. That's what this reminds you, uh, me of is, uh, yeah, no, that makes total sense. Sorry, I, I, I jump on you there. I was going to say, I bet you any amount of money that the exact thing that I am thinking of right now, uh, that phrase is going to get posted by somebody in the comments of this video. Uh, I can't wait to read it. On that. <laughs> <laughs> it will be there. But um, it's, it's probably yes. just to do with the, the rhythm or the, the sounds that Lane has chosen to put here. It's very kind yeah. of ho- horse riding-y. But again, it, you know, the, the story that I've got in my mind, which is probably nothing to do with the, the game whatsoever, but the story that voice plays telling me, the non-video mm-hmm. game player, is now they're getting ready for battle. Perhaps this is um, foreshadowing them traveling to where the battle happens to be. But it, it, yeah. I, I really love this, this, um, this part. It sounds big and open and um, just wide and sweeping. Yeah, I could see it. And also, they're not, you know, this isn't a moment from the game. Uh, unlike something like Warbringer's Jaina, which I did a couple of weeks ago, that was a cutscene. That was a, well, it wasn't a cutscene, it was a short film. That had a 
beginning, a middle, and an end, and it, it was actually retelling. It's fascinating. It was giving a biased retelling of a story that actually happens in the games, but from the point of view of the person who was the villain in that moment, and it's making the good guy sound bad. Um, it's quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. But that was a short film. That told a specific story. This isn't really doing that. This is just kind of, you know, this song, if I understand correctly, the lyrics for this, you're saying, you're talking about context. The lyrical point of this, the song in the game, is only sung by bards in taverns. You go into the tavern and you, you pay the bard a couple of bucks and say, hey, will you sing this for me? Um, I don't think it is something that is used over a specific moment in the game. So they kind of have freedom to do what they want with it. Uh, and I agree. I think that's that you're, you're right on with what you're saying. And I think it's because Lane has brought motion into this that wasn't there previously. Yes, we had bass guitar Jeff doing the dum 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 dum, but that's not quite the same that's not upped the ante from where we were previously mm -hmm. it set the stage for the ante to be upped which lane then does Very and the right. natural progression from somebody walking in giving you information everybody getting ready is then everybody moving and so i think it makes complete sense that that's where your mind goes with this mm -hmm. and it is it's got it's got not a march step rhythm to it but it definitely has a movement rhythm going on it kind of has a pirates of the caribbean beat if you think about lane's um uh, percussion and you uh, put the Pirates of the Caribbean theme over top of it. They kind of match up perfectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, Nerevar Rising and the Pirates of the Caribbean theme are not massively Dissimilar. far apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One wonders if there was a certain inspiration taken from the Elder Scrolls, because I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure, that, yes, that would have definitely come first. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, also, I spotted here the reason I was confused earlier. Caesar and Omar are both elves. Um, okay. Yes, I different I, different my, races my, of elves. Yeah, my feeling is that Caesar's going the wood elf route. Uh, excuse, excuse. No, I did mix them up. Omar's going the wood elf route here with the green paint and um, more of the kind of archer figure. Uh, Caesar here being more armored. Question. Oh, hang on. Can you play as orcs in in the Elder Scrolls? I don't remember. I never did. I'm just wondering because his he he looks like he's gone more for kind of like. A skin tone effect on his as part of his makeup. I think his skin uh, is. I'm trying to remember what color in the in the non studio BTS. lighting he is, but I, I I can't actually remember. But he does have elf ears. Okay. So. Yeah, I I've always tended to play as an elf in these games because I just enjoy archery and that makes sense. But yeah, folks who know the game better, or if I research it beforehand, um, throw out what we think Caesar might be. Um, maybe you can play as orcs. I genuinely cannot remember. Um, yeah, anyway, doesn't matter. But yeah, that's that's why I threw myself earlier. I'm just going to... I love the fact that we switch languages. I'm going to double check. I'm assuming this is the dragon tongue. Um, well, will you check uh, that? I'll yes. prattle on about my thoughts of this section. Do it. Uh, that they sing this language as if it is a language that they know is... Um, it really yes. adds to the, the, the credulity of this section. Not only that, um, but as you would in English they've uh, taken little passages in the background vocals and kind of repeated it or or echoed it or you know just like you would in english so this whole section to me is quite remarkable it's just like yeah we just switched from uh you know english to french or english to spanish or some other language we know it just happens to be this uh whatever language it is that you're going to look up and tell me what it is david but um yeah. they so just Dov Dov Azul, it's called uh, which uh, those who watched the reaction along with me, I had the subtitles on, it actually said in Dov Azul at the bottom, which is what made me think. Um, one thing I want to throw out, and I'll try and research this before this video goes up and I'll post a correction if I need to. Uh, look, in looking it up, somebody here said that Jeremy Saul himself actually developed the language, but I read somewhere that it was, um, I forget the surname now, but Emil uh whatever his uh his surname was it was an italian surname so uh, i will try and find out who actually developed it and correct that but regardless um yes they are singing in dragon tongue right now so this would be the language the, th the i remember when you hear it in 
now that I'm actually recognizing the words a little bit, when you hear it in Dragonborn, the, the song that it's in in the game, mm -hmm. it's like full chorus, so it's actually difficult to pick the uh, enunciation out and hear exactly what they're singing. Whereas here, obviously, it's very, very clear. Mm -hmm. um, but they sing it. But with, yeah, I with, love that they use that. They sing it with emotion and int uh, not intonation, um, inflection. That yes, it, it's 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 very believable. I just I, it, I'm, oh, extremely, I'm all in. Extremely. Okay, I was going to jump back to the beginning of that. Now that's another example, and this is something voice plays so good at, is blending everybody's voices together. If you didn't, you listening to that, having Omar, then Omar harmonized by, I think, Caesar, then having Ellie take over, you could almost be forgiven for not really clocking the change in voices until Ellie goes, he has the da-da-da, da-da-da! Yes. I, that's not, not how you do it. I cannot do the rock god <laughs> scream. But he puts a little of that grit in as the he gravel. goes up. Mm -hmm. And that's the only point where you're like, okay, now I know it's Ellie singing. Mm -hmm. But they blend so well. I've always been impressed by that. Yeah, especially those three. They've uh, they've done, I can think of a couple of other songs. I'm not sure if you've... Um if you've reacted to them yet, so I won't mention what they are, but they've, they've <laughs> done, um, th that trio is uh, so well matched in their, not only their range, but their timbres and their their overall approach to, to singing. They're, they make a, yeah. good, a good trio. Yeah, they really, really do. Jumping back a fraction. <laughs> I also love that out of this ah, up at the top there, <laughs> you get this then very calm entry. It's that 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 it, the the space that Ellie leaves behind is filled by a completely different sound mm -hmm. to what the the one he was just making. Which I just I love that it's such an effective drop um, yes. to kind of go from full rock god to this very kind of calm uh, harmony section. And not only that, but we've also uh, the percussions pulls back this is a yep. uh I, I hate to say a typical jeff arrangement but <laughs> it I, is. I i may have i may have done my share of uh, analyzing some of his um his his tricks and, and techniques yeah, sure and this is in the middle of a song is where he kind of pulls back because you can't just keep ramping up and up and up and up and up no. you got to give your listener a little break every once in a while it's kind of an ebb and flow uh so 100%. here the, the percussion cuts out and we're kind of gentle again for a second. And you're like, yeah, this is kind of a fake out gentle. You, we know we're going to get more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Gorgeous bell chords. Such a good build. I was... I, oh. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Problem I, with both of us being able to do that. Yeah, we're both so excited <laughs> about this one part. Um, I was going to go all uh, uh, chord nerdy on this part for a second. Do it. Uh, do it. Ellie, just Ellie's got three little notes that just please the ever-living hack out of me. Um, he's just kind of got the leading tones heading up into the resolution of the chord. Goes from a G minor to a G major. Sorry excuse me, G sharp minor to G sharp major and then into the mm. C minor chord. And it just, it just has, there's nothing really special about it, except I like it. And that's, uh, that's yeah. the end of that story. It's a really <laughs> nice, really nice chromatic movement, mm -hmm. I think. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's so pleasing when you're already so high just to inch it. Rather than it's one thing you, you know you have da 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 you could do that that's fine but that da 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 just crawling up yeah it's really really effective chromatics are a way to my heart so that's you won fair. me over I mean, Ellie <laughs> the crunch you could get out of them is quite mm -hmm. amazing um, I actually wanted to come I mean actually one thing I want to step back and say we've talked I've been sort of blustering around it with regards to the um, uh who they're supposed to be but the costuming and the makeup in this are outrageously good mm -hmm. they really really are the fact that they've not only managed to get them all in armor but in or in in garb more i guess in ellie's mm -hmm. case 
But the fact that they've managed to get five completely distinct characters on screen who you can identify kind of roughly what they do just by looking at them. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeff is clearly the kind of big, burly, slow tank. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've got your archer in Omar. Ellie's clearly a mage of some sort. Um, uh, Lane is sort of the berserker Berserker, character. And I feel like, uh, you know, Caesar's got kind of that more rounded, uh, maybe slightly defender role going on. And I can just look at that. I'm coming from the point of view of knowing the game. So I know some of the classes they could be representing. But at the same time, it's so clear. And even though they have some of the same color armor, like Ellie, uh, uh, excuse me, Jeff and Caesar are both in red, but Jeff has this not entirely complete, like half body suit that's kind of got a kind of cocky flexibility about it. Mm-hmm. Whereas Caesar's much more just like, Whoa, you know, um, Plus, uh, which Caesar, is a kind of Caesar has a full set of chainmail underneath that cloak yeah. too, so you can he's kind of where he's. Uh performing with that gravitas like literally upon him so yeah i'd be interested to know what that's made of actually because i've worn a chainmail shirt and it's heavy it's actual chainmail it is wow that's impressive yeah that's i mean you know what it's going to help get the extension in the neck because it'll keep his shoulders down (laughs) well (laughs) i think he needs it (laughs) that that's i was going to lead into how you were commenting on the different characters i mean in typical voice play fashion it's go big or go home like they're not going to Oh, they're not going to do do this halfway. If you're going to do makeup, do makeup, put the ears on this. It's, it's really adds, even though they're just standing in a five person formation, it still adds, yeah. it adds to the story. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it, actually kudos, especially with something like this, where the makeup is so intricate. And I feel like this goes for something like Jack's lament as well. Um, Kudos to whoever is doing continuity on this, which I would imagine is a combination between Rick and uh, whoever Rick's uh, partner was working on this. Yeah. Renette, thank you. And Kathy. I would mm-hmm. imagine it's probably the three of them working together. But the continuity, you know, sure, I'm not scrolling through this going, oh, is this little line on Omar's nose in a slightly different position? But given that they're probably sweating a storm up wearing all this stuff and doing these performances under lights, everything looks really consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure, with a music video, you can get away with a bit, but still, there's nothing there that's kind of standing out to you and going, "Oh, they forgot to repaint this on when they read it," or you know, whatever right. it has to be. And that's hard work. You know, I've I've seen continuity people working on movies, and while there's a shot going on, they are staring for any thing that changes. Yeah. Um, and while I'm at it again, I've already talked about cool lighting, but this as the camera sort of repeatedly passes Omar here and you have this kind of, it's almost the effect of God rays. It's not quite that because we're not outdoors, but Mm -hmm. that's kind of the vibe they're going for here. And this kind of pattern, this is almost like, bump the mic there. Um, This kind of pattern weaving over him as we go past and past and past again. And it's just such an effective use of lighting because it's kind of brightening everything. We're Mm -hmm. still in this very cold room. Obviously they're lit from the front now, so we can see everybody clearly. But we've never had a point where the room has really warmed up. Right. But you have this white light, which in and of itself is not warm. You you need to go yellowish to start getting into the warm territory. But it warms this room up because blue is cold. this blue, rather, is colder. This mm-hmm. white somehow seems warmer, even though white is a very cold colour. It somehow seems warmer than the room around it, which is kind of awesome. It might just be brightness, mm-hmm. but it's playing a nice trick on the mind to make it look like something else is going on. Yeah. Ellie, so damn good at what he does. <laughs> and he's just getting better and better. Like this video is, he I is. don't know when it's from, at least a year and a half ago, if not more. And he's just- That's a good question, actually. Yeah. Up, upping, upping his game every, each and every time he does lighting. Yeah, well, then I think being given more to play with too, especially with like the LED screens. and things. Like, not, not that there's anything wrong with the work that they do at Patty Cake, uh, but it kind of gives him more of a toy box, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, jumping back a step. I like to stop in preparation for what's coming up because I know what's coming up. Go for it. Well, let me just jump in with one thing before you do, because I want to just comment on the one thing that was just there, which is what Lane's doing with the percussion here. Because essentially what he's doing is this boom, 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 boom. But it's not that because he's got this boom, 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 boom,
Yes. There's all these little notes. He's there's so many like it's and you can imagine a drummer doing that. Like that's something drummers do. They they'll hit a snare drum and then play the side of the snare, so you get that kind of almost cracking sound of the sticks on the metal rather than the sticks on the drum skin. And he's doing that right now. And it's making that percussion, one, it's picking it up from where it was before. Two, it's just making it really interesting to listen to. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, but please, yes. bring us into the next one. Well, uh, people who are watching your video in anticipation of this part, uh, this is uh, <laughs> Jeff giving himself a heroic um, bit of arpeggios here. Um, yep. And he just executed executes it so like seemingly effortlessly even though yeah. that is a feat and a half i counted them out and each arpeggio has 11 notes um just going up and down the scales damn uh, he's got four 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 of them in different chords uh, i wrote them down here c sharp minor e a and then f sharp just going up uh and they're just in the background it's not like i don't even think the camera's on him for for much of it uh he's just 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 in the background, yeah, just going to do some really difficult, widely reaching octave and a half arpeggios here. Nope, no big deal. And the fact that he did that to himself just kind of makes me giggle. <laughs> but it is, it's such, I didn't realize it was as complicated as that because he makes it seem so seamless. Yeah, he makes um, it seem and effortlessly. And now that you said that, yeah. yeah, I'm so much more impressed because I know how difficult that is. You know, I've sung arpeggios in my day. My voice is nothing like what it used to be because I don't really practice anymore. But mm -hmm. it, it's hard stuff that he's doing here. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. he makes it sound like it isn't, and which we're, is a skill in and of itself. Yes, exactly. And we're at the just about the, the pinnacle part of the song now. So you're mm -hmm. like, well, got to gotta keep up in that ante. And that's that's what he's chosen to do here, which I think is it's oh, yeah. uh, it's something that we haven't heard yet before. Um, yep. And so that also escalates the song even further. Mm hmm definitely. Let's run into that. <laughs> yeah, seriously, people, you have no idea how hard that is. And it's also not that he's just that he's doing that. He's doing it at pace. Yes as well jumping yeah. so you were talking earlier about caesar's fifth jump which is also very impressive and it's especially i think actually it's harder with vocalization you know if you're sort of singing i don't know i can't think of a good word right now on word it's fairly easy to do that but when you're just going bum bum oh, it yeah. suddenly becomes trickier to land mm -hmm. which is why it's so impressive that you know i can't remember what the word was caesar was singing but it wasn't something that kind of led itself or lent itself rather easily to that kind of thing i don't think mm -hmm. um and here we have it even harder because jeff's just going bum, 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 and he's nailing every single damn note is there a tiny bit of post-processing just to kind of clean them up a little bit it's Probably, likely maybe. yeah eh? but, but you got to be but, close to 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 make that effective and yeah. we, we know that he can do it anyway so a hundred percent but it, yeah. it is it's something i've said before i haven't said it for a while actually because i don't really talk about the post-processing anymore because it's so minor but you can't post process you know i can't sing on word and turn that note into this note that doesn't work if no. you do that it becomes you sound like a and weird robot yeah exactly yeah. it's you can only push a note a very small distance from where it is before every you've heard auto tune right anybody who's watching this has heard a pop singer singing and they're like that sounds fake mm -hmm. because it does now because they do it, it deliberately yeah they auto-tune it, you know, okay, there's probably a few singers out there who auto-tune it because they can't really sing that well, um, but they write a good song. Most of them do it because it is a very specific effect they're going yeah. for. Think about... Um, Shares Believe. Yes, very good example. And although I don't know how much auto-tuning there is in this, one th one example I would give is actually Die Another Day, the Madonna James Bond song. It has that... It's all very, very clipped. That's rhythmic auto-tune, effectively. You're, you know, clipping everything down. Mm -hmm. Think about that, but do it with pitch. The further you go, the more it sounds like that rather than flowing singing. Right. You don't want that in a song like this, which is all about the flowing singing. So the fact that Jeff is nailing all of these so well is fantastic. Yes, it's it's brilliant. Show off. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here, though. Oh, yeah. Here it's just slow too. It's also the evolution of what he's doing yeah. right now. Here we go. <laughs> oh, 
Holy smoke! That's and they're so just right. one after another. Like he does. It's not like he does one and then takes a measure or two. It's like also the breath control to do that. Like because every time you have a plosive consonant, like he's not doing. It's not like he's doing. You know, it's not very heavy. But even so, every time you have a pa 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 you're using a tiny bit more breath. Yeah, because every one of it, the simple blockage of air forces more out when you open the mouth. Mm -hmm. Simple physics. And you're but, not getting yeah. a sound out of that, so it's like a it's a it's a throwaway. Yeah, exactly. Um, really, really impressed with what's going on uh, melodically here with these climbing things that are going on over the top all the way up. Is, I think that's Omar at the end there, who's way up in the rafters somewhere. Um, it might be Ellie, actually. It might be Ellie. I'm not sure. I, I feel like it has a little less of his rock god tone, which is why I was wondering. But just this section here. <laughs> Yeah, Omar. Yeah. That whole section, this call and response, da da dum ba da dum ba da dum ba this, and then they start changing what they, it's, it, the, the response becomes different to the call, and they, there's just this gradual crescendo, both in terms of uh, volume, but also in terms of kind of musical characteristic as well, as we're climbing up to that, the climax of Omar hitting that crazy high note and just drifting back down again like he wasn't even trying. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's that's an incredible structure. A really good arrangement by Jeff there, just to weave all the while he's doing his own thing. But having those voices just kind of interweaving with each other so much, it's just brilliant. And knowing knowing the strengths of his singers, knowing that Omar can have that sustained note in that range, in that lightness, yeah. which is what the song needs at that point. You don't want you know somebody who's gonna. You, he probably didn't want Ellie there belting that. He wanted something a little right. bit lighter. So it's like, okay, I'm, I know that Omar can do this song or do this note in the texture that he required there. Yeah. And the nice thing is he knows four of these voices like the back of his hand. Mm -hmm. I assume by this point they probably worked with Omar before, but it. I like the fact that because voice play, they're constantly changing their makeup, but only by one person usually. Mm -hmm. And so you're just having this subtle shift, but because he knows everybody else so well, he is able to really play to the strengths of whoever number five turns out to be that time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if it's Jay, it's even easier because he probably knows Jay's voice better than anybody right now. But it's just remarkable how much they fit their guests. I've, I've said before how well they pick their guests for the song they bring them into, yeah. but also... I feel like Jeff does that because he knows how to, and, and Lane too, I'm sure. Um, he knows how to arrange to fit that voice into the sound that is going to be created around it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's Marv. It's why Jamie Ray can arrange for 11 voices in Voctive and still make everything sound distinct because he knows all those voices so well. If I went in and tried to arrange for voice play now... You know, I'm an okay arranger. I would do nothing like this because I don't have that familiarity. And I would imagine the first time they work with a new guest, I'd be interested, actually. That could be a, cu a, a curious analysis, is listen to the first time they work with somebody and then listen to the fifth time they work with that person. That Even would if be it's very four years apart, mm -hmm. I bet it would be more comfortable later on down the line because that first time, you know, you know what they sound like, you know their vocal range, but you don't know what they can do and how well it blends. Mm -hmm. Um, I think point. it's probably a testament to them how well they managed to fake that anyway. Well, fake it. That's the wrong way of putting it. That's, <laughs> that seems a bit condemning. But um, how well they make it work without that familiarity. Mm -hmm. But I would be interested to see if there's a difference. Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. Who's to say? Jeff's a damn good arranger. So I would perfectly willingly believe he gets it right first time. But... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> also in octaves with Ellie, right? Yeah, exactly. I, think, I assume that's Ellie. I just picked that up. I was listening yeah. to the high note before, but he's in complete octave with, with Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. Also, sorry, <laughs> so many things going on all the time. Um, Lane and Jeff both doing dum, 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 dum. Like Lane's singing now, mm -hmm. but he's still percussive because he's adopted that bass guitar thing that Jeff was doing earlier. Yeah. Um, also, he just looks badass standing there with the sword, like, in front of him. <laughs> he's he's a, a perfect berserker. That was a perfect, perfectly he, cast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
And actually, I love how casually Jeff's just holding a warhammer. Yeah. I'm sure it's not particularly heavy, but he kind of plays it off well. And we know how well he's built. Like, he could, <laughs> he could carry something. But he makes it look so casual. It's great. <laughs> So jumping back a step, <laughs> Fusro Da, uh, this is a thing you can do in the game. This is one of the most memed to death elements of this game. I knew about Fusro Da before I knew Skyrim had even come out because I was a bit slow on the uptake back then. <laughs> but still, it's a very known thing. For, uh, this is what's called a dragon shout. Okay. It's an ability that you get through the game. You get several of them. Fusro Da is far and away the most famous one. Uh, and it's it translates to something like unstoppable force. This is dragon tongue again. Okay. Um, and it's un unrelenting force, unstoppable force, something like that. And basically, if I if I understand correctly, and I have watched these memes, but again, not for a long time because they're old at this point. But you basically you shout at somebody and kind of blast them away from you, oh. like the force the, that kind of sonic representation coming is in yeah. the game i think but it's like it's it's like a wall of force just hits the thing and and uh the physics in uh the elder scrolls games um they're developed by bethesda who are well known for their engine their game engines having a significant amount of jank and the physics in elder scrolls was such that you could have some very very comical things where you'd take one of your friends up to the top of a mountain and fusro dar them off <laughs> Uh, and they'd they they disappear like five miles away. That's hilarious. Uh, and, or, or you know, you could you do it to a giant or something like that, and they'd go like a mile up into the air and then fall down somewhere over there. You could, you know, don't even ask about the goat. Uh, <laughs> some okay. of the physics just went. Some of the physics just went really weird. There was some. It was, it, there were lots of videos going around ten years ago of people using this and the weirdest things happening. But the point was, it was supposed to be a combat ability you yell this at somebody and it kind of forces them back. That's, I, I think I have the gist of it there. Again, not having played it myself. I only have uh, so much to go on and a bunch of meme videos I haven't seen for probably close on a decade, but that's the gist of it. But I love the fact you now we're coming back to what you and I were talking about earlier, which is that visualization uh, foreshadowing of the breath coming like the out breath, of Wayne's yeah. mouth. Now we have this sonic it's, power. It's out of uh, uh, the, blasting out. the three in the middle, actually. I think it's, um, yes. Yeah. And, Elio, uh, Mar and Caesar, yeah, I, I think so. Or at I least they're the ones we see. True, true, yeah. And I love that they added that little uh, special effect in the post. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it just goes to the detail that they put in. Like, that's not a small thing to put that kind of... See if I can capture one of them on screen. So... <laughs> it's really hard to stop. <laughs> YouTube is easy, SyncWatch is not. There we go. <laughs> So it's kind of like this blue magical power, but it's got texture to it. Like you, it's you, it. You've got to interpolate that on top of the other people. It's it's got to. You have to interact somehow with that lighting, which mm -hmm. they've only done a little bit of, but they don't really need to do much more than that. But it, this isn't a small thing to throw in. You have to create that. Um, uh, the artistic visualization of that you have to actually put it in, and they're also. Uh, are they moving the cameras at this point? Yeah, the cameras are moving too, which means you also have to track the shot. Yes. Otherwise, like this, you know, coming out of Ellie's face, for example, where you're seeing it right here, as it moves around the camera, it could do this, which would look really weird. Whereas what should happen is this. Mm -hmm. It keeps going in a straight line. Mm -hmm. The camera carries on moving around. They've done that really well. And yeah, sure. With modern technology, that stuff isn't particularly difficult. But the moment you're putting special effects onto a moving camera shot, they get significantly more difficult. And I'm just really impressed that they went to that much effort with this. Me too. It makes total sense Fusarada would be in there. It is such an iconic thing from this game. Yeah. But the way that the detail they put into it is magnificent. And when they first uh, posted this video, the amount of comments is like, oh, you did Fusarada. That like everybody was so happy. All of the video game nerds. So I think they won some yeah. definite points by doing that. It might have been I'll a lot of it. effort, but uh, the payoff was worth it. That's the thing. It's one of those things where if you get this right, so many people are going to jump on it. Yeah. Because it's something that is just so iconic. Yeah. Uh, I think I, uh, what I do quite like is they stick to, because I'm pretty sure in the game, it's more of like a fool's roda. Like it's, it's, they don't have it in that kind of bat, bat, bat. Mm -hmm. I like that they did that though, because it suits what they've done with this song better. Yeah, that now, makes maybe sense. it's in the song. I don't know. Maybe they sing it in the song and it's just, you know, it's sung, but they don't have the power to do it. Whereas mm -hmm. here, obviously, they're representing that they do. Um, 
but the fact that they kept it bump 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 they kept it in rhythm mm-hmm. rather than the way that it is spoken shouted whatever you want to call it in the game it's very satisfying uh, i think is very satisfying <laughs> <laughs> Also coming off this angelic descent. Yes. There's an interesting death count that's happening now. Um, mm-hmm. And yep. it's, again, it's just elevating it to this emotional level that, um, is it a, a war cry? Like something, I don't know. Something, something exciting is happening. I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's just like a couple of notes. They're very simply and lightly sung. They're way mm. in the background, and yet it adds so much of an emotional impact for, for me. Yeah, it really does. It's very effective. I think there is like a kind of... It's almost like we've they, they've almost become a Greek chorus to me at this point in time. Like I feel like the fight's happening, but I feel like they're watching it rather than being in it. And I think part yeah. of that is that you do have that kind of epic sound that kind of it's not it's not heavy it's not in the moment it's got a bit more of you know now it's the Rohirrim being led by Gandalf charging down the hill kind of thing it's got that vibe about it yeah but at the same time notice also that the camera movements are much more sweeping now like even thinking you know at the beginning they were way slower but even thinking about that god ray moment that i was talking about where it was kind of drifting in front of caesar and omar now it's kind of much more of a, a, a aggressive pan and and uh, dolly shot that's going on here and it's just elevating the pace of what's going on but it's giving me that pulled back cinematic you know this is the slow motion moment where you see the hero carving through the entire army by themselves kind of thing it's got yeah. that vibe going on right now i think yeah so the camera is matching or the music is matching the camera uh, motions yeah. so like it's it's again... something else they do really well yeah yeah let's go back and hear that desk actually i'm gonna stop for oh yes thank you ellie uh i'm gonna stop for a second on that that's such an interesting sound that lane chose for that little break that kind of thing it was very you know he's kind of got a lot of this kind of echo and uh, to have something that's quite so kind of clicky and it, there's ver- less reverb on it than a lot of what he's creating it was a very fascinating moment and i kind of feel like it's the antithesis of that dum, 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 dum thing that we had going on earlier mm-hmm. now we have a break but we have a break that sounds uniquely different to the ones that we were having previously yeah i wonder if there's some um uh like symbolic meaning mm. behind the sound that he did or is it like oh I haven't done this sound yet. This is something cool. This is something that will uh, elevate the interest. But I wonder if there's, I, I'm going to have to go back and listen with my, with my own personal story in mind of, of what I've mm. come up with and see how that ties into the whole thing. At any rate, yeah, it's just an interesting thing that we haven't heard before. It is. Contextually speaking, I couldn't answer that. I have no idea if there is any relevance to this. Um, I just, yeah, it's very, very cool. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That drop, As... like that, the way that it just peels back so slowly and then it comes back in, but it's had that, it's that thing where it's, you slow it down. You've got into the, the reflective moment or the poignant moment or the sad moment, whatever it is you're going for, but the tone has changed completely. It's like a realization. Again, now, mm-hmm. uh, previously when the music was uh, more exciting, more robust, that to me was sort of maybe uh, this group of five, recounting tales of the past battles that have gone successfully like uh revving everybody up uh, a rally yeah. and cry and now kind of realization is set in it's like okay guys we gotta we gotta go do this thing now we're all revved up we've heard the stories we've we've um witnessed in our minds the the successes but now we're kind of back down to reality it's like it's go time yeah yeah absolutely love it Oh, also, we're back to the beginning again. Dum, the dum, dums, dum, yeah. Dum. Yeah, and that same sort of, or very similar pattern as well. Very good cohesion. Lovely, bo- lovely book ending, yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on, was that? Oh, 
I feel like there's a bit of that boom sound there, but it doesn't echo. Mm. And I'm not sure if it's just Lane, you know, ending his a, percussion. A, yeah, but he's sort of ending it, whether he's repeating, like mimicking that sound or whether it was him potentially. But if it was a, a VST, having him like mimicking that sound, but it only happens the once, the echo isn't there. Mm. It's giving that space to, to let the arrangement carry on. Back to Jeff as a solo. And it's so slow now. Like the pace has really dropped off. The camera is still moving a little more than it was at the beginning, I think, um, without going back and double checking. But the pace of the song itself, like it's so kind of, this is, you know, you feel like this is six hours after the battle and everybody's exhausted and mm. uh, either dead or collapsed against a tree, catching themselves and, you know, just sort of coming down from everything that just right. happened. It's great storytelling doing this. It's a really nice idea. I tell you, I tell you the dragonborn You know what's so weird to me about that little sequence? There's something almost hymn-like. Verging potentially, this is going to be the weirdest thing I say all video, there's something almost Christmas Carol like about the harmony that they just sang there. Hmm. Let's listen to that it's again. Yeah, it just that, that little section, those last I tell you, I tell you. I tell you, I tell you the dragonborn come. I can see that. Yeah, it's it, there's something it's it's I think it's the I tell you, I tell you the dragonborn come. That's not quite the notes they sang, but it's that bass bass. Jeff's here, it's certainly not bass. Um, but the bass that just kind of, it keeps very tight, crawls back up again, and the chords are all quite close together. But it's giving me that vibe of, um, who is it I'm thinking of? Like a John Rutter um, oh. type choral vibe yeah. going on there. Which is just, it's such a fascinating sound because it gives it that sense of after the event, in a way. It gives it that sense of, this is truly reflection. This isn't in the moment anymore we are mm -hmm. genuinely looking back because this is this is now the bit that was written about what just happened exactly I mean, obviously the whole the whole song is written about what happened yeah. but the way that the, the the narrative is being represented in the musical style is fascinating to me that's good observation I tell thank you, you i tell you the dragon Now, have you ever heard of a better ending than that? Like you'd, you'd expect that, it to end on a chord yeah. or a slow drop or something, but just like, and then well, what happened? Not, not even that. You expect Omar's note to finish. Yeah. The fact that they cleanly cut him off is fascinating to me. That's an extraordinary. And then we end with that same sound again. Same, yeah. Um, but that is so well designed because he gets the lovely little riff and they have finished songs before with a single soloist singing one note mm -hmm. and then it just drifts away and then it finishes, but they don't let it drift. That's fascinating. And that, that paired with them walking out of the tavern yeah. is like, okay, let's, let's go get this done guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's perfect because they walk just before it happens. You have just enough time to realize it's not going to finish quite the way you think it is. Mm -hmm. And then it finishes a different way entirely. Yeah. I, that was not a finish I would have ever seen coming. Absolutely brilliant. Really, story really. Telling. I want to see that again. Brilliant. Truly brilliant. Oh, you know the dragonborn. I love Omar's tone. Come. So good. Even Lane isn't done. <laughs> Like, you clearly <laughs> hear Lane and Omar just get cut off. Yeah, like, but not... Brilliant choice. Not, not cut... Uh, it's not an unpleasant cutting off. It's... it's no. It's uh, like they have let them have their moment and they are yeah. done-ish, but then it's taken over with that with that sound effect, which is super and I cool. And I would imagine to the small... And I'm, I can't 
I'm guessing here it's I'm not good enough at picking this kind of thing up. But I would imagine what they probably did was right before the doom comes in, there is a quarter of a second of any sound that is still happening rapidly fading out. Mm -hmm. Because what doesn't happen is you don't get a clip, which you wouldn't have anyway. Ed's too good for that. But you don't get the sense that it's someone just like took a... Uh, exactly. Yeah. Cut the audio off right there and bolted this sound on. There is a very definite finish, mm -hmm. but it's so rapid, so minuscule, you can't really pick it up. It still feels incredibly abrupt, but it doesn't feel like you've you've hit a brick wall. It just feels like you've stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's which it's... sounds like a slightly counterintuitive <laughs> thing to say, but hopefully that makes some kind of sense. No, I get it, and it's it's just such a an emotional impact, uh, a brilliant way to end the mm. song. Yeah, it is. That is utterly fantastic. That might be, thinking about it, I think that might be the most holistically narrative video of theirs I've seen. Interesting. Like, I feel like, I feel like there's ones where, you know, something like Little Mermaid, they tell a bunch of different stories really well. And then I feel like there are, there are something like In the Air Tonight, which had a vibe to it, but it didn't really have a narrative running right. through it. Yeah. This, I feel like from beginning to end, you could, like, obviously, you know, you can storyboard a video, but I feel like you could actually write the plot of this out, more or less, even though it's a fictional yeah. thing. They're not representing something that's happened. I but know. I there is could. a very, yeah, there's like 10 bullet points that you could write down that tell the story of what just happened in this video. And I feel like they're great storytellers. They always, one of the things that drew me to them in the first place. But this, I feel like they re it really is a story. Mm-hmm. I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, it's 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 amazing that uh, just you know five guys standing in a line. Granted, they're in uh, elaborate costumes and makeup, but uh, yeah. they're they're not acting anything out, and yet you can still get no. that from from the from the music. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. That is phenomenal. I am so glad we did this one. That was a lot. I'm of fun. so glad you like... invited me over. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's a great having you. I, it's it's interesting because there are so many things like you know I I still have to do enemy. I still have to do Halo, and they could have been awesome for this as well. But there's this. There feels that I, I feel very satisfied coming out of this. Like That's... I feel like I I had the whole meal, <laughs> um, which is very gratifying. I get that. Um, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. It's always such a pleasure to have you here. Oh, it's um, always so much fun talking with such a like-minded person, and it's it's well, so cool agreed. to to see the things that you know are both our hands are hovering over the pause button because we're going to say the exact <laughs> same thing. So, so yep. pl please have me back. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. We will do this again. Uh, but thank you for being a part of Video Game Month with me. I know it's it's interesting. I feel like we had a really interesting sort of that logic of one gamer, one not it's it yeah can bring out things that both of us there were definitely things i you gave me an interpretation and there's where there's moments where it's just like oh this is this is this character just being mm -hmm. whereas you're seeing a bit more of a story to it than i did and then there's moments where i recognize what's going on i love that counterpoint that made this a really interesting discussion so. it made it very interesting to yeah come at it with two different perspectives mm -hmm. awesome well thank you so much angie oh, thank i'm you. going to uh I'm going to cut back to just me to finish off the video, but I really appreciate your time. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will do this again for sure. Sounds good. Thank you so much to Angie Woolard of Confessions of a Chord Junkie for joining me for this video. You can check out her content at confessionsofacordjunkie.com. There's a link going to be popping up right up there where she's done some amazing... Um, uh, analyses of different songs do go and check those out also if you haven't seen it already i should have said this at the beginning but check out our um breakdown that we did of house of the rising sun jeff castellucci's uh performance of that again i'll stick a card up here quickly uh that was fantastic that was the first time she was on the channel um and uh, had a blast doing that one as well so very very grateful to her for coming back i hope that you folks enjoyed that as much as we did and as much as i did um had a fantastic time with that one uh please do like the video hit the subscribe button and the notification bell uh do please if you would care to do so head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash david k reacts or patreon.com forward slash david k reacts where you can donate to support the channel you can also do that right here on youtube by leaving a super thanks below uh any of those would be gratefully appreciated um and that's it for this week i have uh no hang on this week where am i this is going to be a friday video i think yes so it'll be this week uh more videos coming out next week towards the end of video game month thank you so much for joining me for this one 
Uh, do uh, have an absolutely wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, uh, night time. I don't know. Um, what should we have? 9, 7, uh, 17 a.m. Sure, why not? <laughs> Look after yourselves. Take care for now, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Our hero, our hero who claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the dragon. With the voice wielding power of the ancient Nord arts. Believe, believe the dragon born comes. It's an end to the evil of all Skyrim's foes. Beware, beware. Dragonborn come the dragonborns are come for the darkness has passed and the legend yet grows you know you know the dragonborns Dragon.